Welcome to Business 214, fun with advanced Excel. Hey, this is VBlog10, we're still in chapter two. Hey, look, if we click on the normal curve sheet tab, you can see they talk in the textbook about the normal curve and probabilities. We're not gonna do that, this is not a statistics class. <clears throat> Let's click on the next sheet tab. I gotta show you a couple more charts. And in this little uh, sheet, we're gonna talk about the difference between a line chart and an XY scatter diagram. Hey, here are years and number of customers. So as the years increase, we, it looks like we've had some changes in customer numbers. And so we want a chart that shows whether the over time the customer number of customers go up or down. Now notice there's only um, the way we're going to do this is like a line going up and down over time. And across the horizontal axis, there will be equal distance. Each year is going to be an equal distance apart. The only number that's going to be in this chart is the up and down. So the, the vertical axis will represent, represent number of customers. Whereas if we look over here, customers contacted in total sales, here we can have this on the horizontal axis or x-axis, and this will be on the um, up and down vertical axis, the y-axis. So there'll be two variables, and each point on the chart will be exactly in accordance with these two numbers. This far out the x, this far up the y. So this is when you use an xy scatter diagram. Two data points, one data points, and the data points are equidistance on the horizontal axis. All right, that's hard to vision in your head. Let's just see it. Highlight all that data, go up to insert, charts, and line. There's a scatter diagram for two variables. Oh, there's one variable with equidistance on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to click uh, the little drop down there and click on that. Zip. Oh, and there it is, just as we want. This axis, each each point on it is like a category, equidistance. The only number that's determining how this chart looks is here. Now let's click on this legend and delete. And I'd like to click on this and format it. I'd like to have a comma there. So Control-1 is the keyboard shortcut in Excel for format cells, and that's how we um, can format chart elements, Control-1. And I'm going to say number. Oh, look, it looks like the number tab in format cells. I'm going to click number, comma separator, and I'm going to highlight that and type zero. And down at the bottom here, I can't get this to fit on the screen. It says close, so click close. By the way, this is different. Notice it's already given us a preview. When you see a close button, it means it does it as you, you click here. That's kind of like that auto preview thing we've seen in Excel so far. If it says OK, then it doesn't actually take effect in the sheet or the chart until you click OK. So I'm going to click close, boop, and there it is. Now, uh, I want to add a title here. Oh, it says number of customers. That's pretty self-explanatory, but it is important sometimes to, uh, this, this chart's self-explanatory. You're not going to mistake it's a year here, not going to mistake it's number of customers. So you don't really need any a label chart junk. That would be if we started adding number of customers here and there. So that's a line chart. Let's see how to do an XY scatter diagram highlight. And the X should be first, and the Y should be second. That way you can interpret it correctly. Insert, chart, and XY scatter. By the way, so far we've looked at column, line, and XY scatter. Um, I'm going to click this one right here. No, this one. Ew, yuck. No problem. Easy to fix. Let's uh, highlight this because that's not a very good chart. I'm going to go up to the context sensitive chart tools. There's layout we looked at. Let's look at design. I'm going to click on the design. Oh, change chart type. By the way, uh, this is very important. You can switch the rows and column and you can add and change data using this one. Very important. This is how you can move the chart from a sheet tab to somewhere on top of a sheet. But anyway, let's click change chart type and then an XY scatter diagram. I'm going to click on that one right there. Click OK. Oh, much better. I'm going to click on this legend and hit, uh, I'm going to leave that there. Um, I would like to add in uh, statistics or linear regression, you can add a line that estimates what all these uh, xy points mean. And we can see some pattern. It looks like as this increases, this increases. Oh, yeah, this is, and you know what? I don't know what this is. I better add a label to help me before I add that line. Let's go add our labels. I'm going to go to layout, 
labels, axis titles, and I'm going to do the horizontal one first. And this one I'm going to click there and control A and say number of customers. I'm going to blow this chart up here. I'm going to control and roll my mouse. There we go. That's a little bit better. Oop. All right, so number of customers. Now I need to add something here, and I'm going to, oh, actually, let's change that. That's annoying. I'm going to click on this. And one nice new thing in 2007 is they do have a clear delineation when you've highlighted the axis. Control-1. I'm going to click on the number. Remember, these are alongside instead of the top. I'm going to click on number. I'm going to click a separator. I'm going to highlight that and say 0. Then click close. That's much better. Now I want uh, a label here to indicate that this is number of customers here, but this is sales. So I go up to layout, labels, axis labels, and this will be the vertical. I'm going to say wrote, I'm going to say this one, vertical title. Highlight, click in there, control A, and say sales. And then click somewhere else. Now uh, we'd like to estimate that line because it looks like there's a pattern here, right? As the number of customers contacted increase, the number of sales increase. In fact, I'm going to click down here and say number of customers. And then at the very end, oh, that's hard to get. I'm going to hit space, contacted. Now let's add that line because it looks like there is a pattern. And it is direct. As this increase, this increases. So I'm going to go to layout, analysis. Trend line. You can actually also click on the points and then right click, add trend line. Oh, let's go to linear. And down at the bottom, oh, I can't fit this on the screen. I'm going to have to go like this. Display equation. That takes like the hours of calculations for linear regression, regression and does it right away. And R squared, that tells you how good the relationship is. Actually, the uh, then click close. And then click on this and then point to the edge. And when you see that move cursor, you can click and drag over here. All right, so that's a little bit about charts. And um, actually, another important thing about charts, there's two ways to display a chart, either on top of a sheet or as a complete new sheet. And here's the rule. If you're going to do analysis like we did with the histogram, where we change some of the inputs and then watch the chart Update, man, you should have that on top of a sheet. But if you're going to print this thing out, you actually want it as its own separate sheet. So watch this. I'm going to click, make sure the chart is highlighted, and then go up to Design and Move Chart. And then I'm going to click New Sheet. I'm going to type a name here that makes sense. Scatter Diagram. And click OK. And no way, it inserts it as a new sheet. And when you print that, print that out, it has uh, fits perfectly onto an eight and a half by eleven. Prints out very nice. All right, that's a little bit more about charts. Let's go forward. We have one more topic to talk about. Now, what we'd like to do is look at this little table here. We're on the sheet A one. S-I-S-C-I-S, -S -C -I -S, that means average if, some ifs with an S and count ifs with an S. Hey, look, we have year sales, cost of good profit, and sales rep. What we'd like to do is build a little table. And with using a function, we want to sum up the sales, but on two criteria. So let's say in this cell right here, I need to know sales that are for 2006 in Kiko. Here I need the sales for Kiko, but for 2008. These are two criteria that we want to sum upon. In earlier versions of Excel, we had sum if, which only did one criteria. In earlier versions, we had to do an array formula, a much more complicated formula than we are allowed now in 2007 because we have the function called sum ifs with an S, sum ifs, which allows you more than one criteria. I'm going to highlight the whole range. And in this top cell, I'm going to build my formula. Now, I'm going to scroll and roll to make this large so you can see it more easily. And then when I control enter, it will populate all these cells. Now, I'm going to say equals some ifs, open parentheses. Now, sometimes it's easier. Um, I'm not going to use this because of the, the constraints on the screen. But if you click this, you can actually read each one of the um, 
arguments. So here it says, is the actual cells to sum? Criteria range, that's the criteria range. Criteria is the actual criteria like year, 2004. Oh, and look, as you keep tabbing forward, you can see that there's more ranges. Shift tab goes all the way back. I'm going to click Cancel, and I'm going to start over, equals sum ifs. And again, if you, it's easier when you're learning it to use this, but I'm going to, because of the constraints on the screen, use this. All right, now what I'd like to do is add, add up all of the sales. So in my formula, I'm going to click at the top. You can see the formula starting to evolve up here. But I only have one cell. I need to go all the way down. So instead of scrolling, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and Down Arrow. Now this needs to be locked, because when I copy this in all directions, I'm going to hit the F4 key right there. When I copy this down and over, every one of these cells is going to need that sum range. Now the next thing is the criteria range. Now you can do this one first, or this one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do years. Highlight over here. Oh, there it is, years. So I'm going to click on the top one, Control Shift Down Arrow, and F4. That also needs to be locked in every direction, comma. Click on the criteria. Now, we've got to think about this. When I copy this formula down, I want it to move to 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9. But when I copy this direction, I need it locked. So I'm going to hit the F4 once, twice, three times. Why? Because going down across the rows, I don't want a dollar sign in front of the number. But going across the columns, I need it locked. So I need it in front of the letter, comma. The next criteria is sales rep. So I'm going to click in this first one here, Control Shift Down Arrow, and F4. That locks it. If you uh, let's drag and click and drag that away, you can see that there or up here. I'm even going to drag this down. If you point to the edge of the formula bar, you can drag it down, which is new in 2007. Now, the screen tips reminded me that I need to put a comma, so I put a comma. And the next thing is for criteria two. Oh, that's that name right there. Now, for this one, I need a lock going down across the column, but not lock going down across the rows. You can see for this whole column of numbers, even though this is a column of numbers, when we copy it, we're going to cross rows. To, so to lock it going down across the rows, the dollar sign needs to be in front of the two, the row reference. However, when we copy it across the columns, we want it not locked on Isaac, but we want it to move it to Kiko and then Sue. So I'm going to close parentheses, Control Enter. And there you go. If you don't believe it, click in the diagonally of the furthest one away and hit F2. I can't believe it. The purple one, the green one, even when I scroll over, oh, it's still looking at all the right cells. I'm going to click Escape. So that's a great new improvement if you want to do it this way. Hey, uh, pivot tables are a great solution for this also. Um, I am going to show you that right now because I can hardly wait to show you a pivot table. One advantage to this is if you change any of these inputs, this instantly updates. With a pivot table, you have to click the Refresh button first. All right, I'm going to click somewhere in this uh, table here. Notice all this analysis over this direction is separated by a blank space. In order to do any of the data analysis features in Excel, your data has to be field names at the top, uh, field data in columns, records in rows. There can't be any blank columns. In between, you can't have like this. Can't have that. That won't. You won't be able to do your data analysis stuff. Or you can't have that either. Control Z. And you need a blank uh, row or column between any of this table data, in essence, and any of that other data. All right. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to Insert, Pivot Table in the uh, Table Group, and then Pivot Table. Where do you want to? I'm going to say existing in this sheet. I'm actually going to scroll down and click right there. Click OK. Now instantly, this uh, field list drops up. And this is going to be torture trying to do it here with all the uh, with how small the space is. But watch this. What we want is year here and sales rep across the top. So I'm going to click year and drag it down to the row labels. That's right there. A year. So there it is. No way that was so easy. Now I'm going to click Sales Rep and drag it to the column. No way. Look at that. That's just amazing how quickly it does that. And then I'm going to click and drag the sales and drag down to values. No way. Just like that. So pivot table is a much faster way to do it. Uh, you know, but some, and there's some cases where you uh, uh, do want to use a function like this. And so it's good that it's there. It was much harder to do in earlier versions of pivot table. I still can't believe how amazing that is. Hey, we have one uh, last little thing to look at is average if. It's a new function in uh, 2007. 
I highlight the whole range, and right here I'm going to say equals average if arrow arrow tab. And here we just have, um, we don't need to use the average ifs because we have just one criteria, year. Now the range, again, if you click up, boop, right there, you can read each one. of The range is the range of cells you want to evaluate it, so we want years. There's going to be the year, and there's the average range. We're going to do the sales. I'm going to click uh, cancel equals average, double click that average if. The range is going to be my criteria, and so it's going to be years. I'm going to click on the top one, control shift down arrow, F4, scroll over. Now, I am not going to use sales in every one of these cells here. If you scroll over here, you can see that there's, oops, no, I'm sorry. This is right. This year is going to be used in every single one. Comma, because we need to get to the criteria before we were getting to the average range. Comma, that was the years, which is going to be is going to be used in every cell. Comma. Now we need to click on the criteria. Now, when we're going down, we don't want it locked, but when we go across the columns, we want it locked. So we're going to hit F4 three times, get the dollar sign in front of the G that locks it when we're copying across the columns. Now we can click at the end and comma. And now. We have sales here, cost of good here, profit here. Instead of typing in one, two, three different formulas, I'm just going to notice that sales, cost of goods sold, and profit are all right next to each other. So when I highlight the sales and control shift down arrow and then F4, if I F4, or if I think about this for a second, when if I copy down, I want it locked. But notice when I copy this direction, if I were to let this thing not have dollar signs in front of the columns, then this whole range of numbers here would move to this cost of goods sold, which is I want, and then move to profit, which is what I want. So I do not want a dollar sign in front of the letter. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. Remember, the F4 key works on a range if Right after you highlight the range, you hit the F4 key. Then it does both of them at the same time. So that's what I want. Just lock going down, but not across. Close parentheses, Control Enter. You're not going to believe this. Just like that. Click on the last cell, hit F2. I got the right one there. Let me go see if the blue one and the purple one are right. There's the blue one. There's the purple one. That is magic. That is magic. All right. We'll see you um, next uh, chapter. That was chapter two and three. So we'll see you next vblogs for chapter four.